Hey, Wargamers, welcome back to the channel, Death From Above Wargaming. I'm Aaron, and I am back with some more exciting Battleytics action. Uh, another wave of mechs voted on by our patrons, and first up is the Hunchback. Uh, so the Hunchback, not one of my favorites, uh, but so many people love this mech. Uh, it is a 50-tonner. It's, uh, it's just a classic design. It packs a big auto cannon and a bunch of medium lasers. I decided to go with the 4H variant. This one has an AC-10 instead of an AC-20. I'm sorry, I can't stand the AC-20 on a 50-ton mech that only moves 4.6. It, like, never gets in range, guys. Unless you're in, like, you know, the jungle or heavy city. Uh, so I wanted to look at something maybe a little bit more practical. So we're going to take a look at the 4H. We'll see how it does in all the benchmarks. So stick around. Hunchback 4H coming right up. All right, here we are diving into the Hunchback 4H. Uh, so this design uh, was produced in 2819, so it's definitely venerable. Uh, it is seen across, you know, all battlefields in the inner sphere, of course. Uh, now, this thing, as I mentioned, 50 ton to mainstay medium mech, uh, and it has a battle value of 1067. So it's definitely affordable, uh, something you can fit into your force has that abysmal movement profile of 4.6. Now, uh, it is the same as, you know, like that Centurion, uh, which I do love. But again, this thing lacks the, the long range punch, the, you know, the LRMs and things like that. The 4H does have an AC-10 though, which is a great weapon, uh, good range, you know, solid uh, damage, good on the heat. So we'll see how this one does. Dissipates 13 heat, so uh, it does have a decent amount of heat sinks, but, when you downgrade the AC-20 to an AC-10, you're also adding on two additional medium lasers. So this thing can get pretty hot pretty quick. Um, again, AC-10, four medium lasers, and a small laser make up the armament. Uh, and it's got that ammo in the left torso. As far as the armor goes, um, that is something I think the Hunchback does very well. It's 94.7% coverage. And it's got it in all the right places. It's just a little bit light on the legs, but such as life. Um, I guess uh, if you do end up getting close enough, it's important to note that this does have two hand actuators. Uh, so when you're rummaging through uh, that destroyed building, you can pick up a, a girder or, you know, maybe find a tree out in the forest and smack your opponent across the face with it. Uh, so that's always fun. Um, but this thing is, you know, it is what it is. I am very curious to see how it does in the offensive benchmarks. So let's start there. All right, so as far as inner sphere mechs are concerned, uh, and especially medium ones at that, this this doesn't do doesn't do too bad. Uh, obviously, in the back end, it's not doing a whole lot of damage. Uh, it doesn't. It's it's basically ineffective until you're within 15 hexes, 15 inches. Uh, you know, and that AC-10 can come into play. The nice thing about the AC-10 is it's not variable damage. I mean, you're smacking somebody for 10 points in one location. I like that a lot, you know, it's PPC vibe, right? Very good, especially in that Succession Wars era. Uh, definitely something to be, you know, to keep your eyes out for. Once it gets into nine inches, uh, that is when, you know, it can start doing a substantial amount of damage. Uh, it does build up heat pretty quick. So if you look at the red line ACD, you can see that yellow line, that's representative of the heat. You know, it's picking up, what is that? Three, four points of heat a turn. Uh, something along those lines. Um, and then basically once it's within, uh, you know, three inches and that small laser comes into play, it's picking up an additional point of heat. Um, overall, though, it, it can manage it pretty well. It never quite gets to shut, never quite gets to shut down uh, in the in the simulation. So that's a good thing. It's not like it's, you know, overheating to the moon. Um, so you can push it for a little bit of extra damage. And the baseline damage worked out to 109.7 over 12 turns. The optimized damage is 118.3. Um, so that's not bad. That's a gain of about 7.8%. Um, so that's that's uh, it's respectable, uh, all things considered. Now, when we look over at the lethality index, it's not doing a great job. Um, it doesn't have a ton of, you know, kill weapons. It's got that AC-10, which is nice. 
it is capable of decapitating um, a mech that doesn't have full armor on the head. Um, or, you know, if it's taken some light damage from an SRM or an LRM cluster or something, that AC-10 is capable of finishing it off. But as it stands on its own, you know, it doesn't really have a lot of, uh, a, a lot of bite outside of that AC-10. You know, just sort of a, a shotgun of medium lasers and then that small laser, which isn't doing a ton. Um, it only kills the Javelin 62.5% of the time over the 12 turn simulation. Um, it's not terrible. It's not great. Um, it's a hunchback. Again, it's a thousand BV. It is what it is. Um, it does have 6.1 damage a hit. I want to call that out. Um, you know, and again, it doesn't have those big decapitating weapons. Um, but let's face it, you know, five points of damage coming out of a medium laser, you know, and you're able to do that four times for 12 heat and still walk, right? And fire your AC-10 and only build up one point of heat. You know that's not bad. Um, that's 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 a pretty good uh, pretty good salvo overall. So you know all things considered, I think this thing is able to churn out the damage if you're able to get it in range. And frankly, that's the big thing. You know relying on mechs that need to be at nine hexes away to do the bulk of their damage um, always makes me nervous. But you know, let's take a look at the defensive sim. This thing does have a ton of armor, so maybe it can just foot slog its way in and actually get into range. Uh, let's see. All right, so the first thing we're going to look at is the, the armor diagnostic. There's a, a couple things I want to call out. Um, I love the distribution on this mech, except for when you look at it from the back. Um, this, <laughs> this thing does not have a whole lot of rear armor. It's like rifleman syndrome, a little bit better than that, but it, it does not have a ton of armor in the rear. It is, however, over-armored on the front torsos, so I'll take that. So as long as you can keep things out of your rear arc, um, you're in good shape. But if I want to talk about, you know, philosophy for a moment, you know, I said earlier, I think in the intro, like, hey, if you're in a city, you know, that's a great thing for this mech. But if you're in a city, I mean, things are more likely to end up in your rear arc. Um, so it's a very confusing design choice in terms of how the armor is distributed um, in that regard. But uh, it is what it is. So if, if I were going to make tweaks to this thing, you would definitely see me redistributing the armor, putting a little bit more um, on the rear for sure. Um, in terms of the mobility, we talked about the speed. Um, it, you know, I don't mind a 4.6 mech. It can keep up with heavies. You run into heavy lance, it's not going to get way ahead. Um, and I think, you know, we'll talk about this in the roll analysis. I think if you're running it with like Warhammers and Marauders and, and these other bigger, um, scarier 4.6 mechs, you know, maybe your hunchback can sneak in unnoticed, especially if it's uh, the 4H and it doesn't have the AC-20, which is a fire magnet. Um, you now, maybe this thing can actually get in. But mobility-wise, it's really not great. Um, I would not ever put this thing in like a medium lance or a light lance. It's just too slow. It's going to get picked out and it's going to get gunned down, um, to, even though it's got a ton of armor, um, you know, for as far as 50 tonners go. I still, I still don't trust that mobility because remember, you know, the slower you are, the lower your TMM, the lower your target mod, right? Um, it's easier to get hit. You're taking more damage. So it's almost like an offset in that regard. Um, you can see that in the survivability chart. So this thing survived 62.6% .6 of the time um, for 94.7% armor coverage. Uh, it's not great. Now, a lot of the, of the deaths are actually attributed uh, to ammunition kills. So 14.2% of the time. Uh, you're looking at ammo kills. So if you get inside on that left torso, if you get in that that gooey interior structure, um, you're something like 33%, is that what it is, um, to hit the ammo? Uh, I'm sorry, 28.6%. So I got to go and take a look at what else is in there. Um, so it's it's packed out pretty good. One, two, three, four, five. There's like seven, seven critical slots. Two of them are ammo. So, I mean, it's not... It's not awful, um, but again, you know, it's it's almost it's almost you know one in three, a little, and somewhere between one and four and one in three chance you're gonna you're gonna peg the ammo if you get inside on the on the left torso and generate a critical. So it is what it is. I, again, I'm not super passionate about the hunchback. I didn't really expect this thing to perform tremendously well, um, but the saving grace, guys, it is dirt cheap. I mean, a thousand BV is it's like it's like half an adder. Uh, <laughs> it's like half a clan 35 ton mech. So let's see how it does on the efficiency. I mean, it did, it didn't do bad damage. I mean, the damage was pretty solid. Their survivability is not great though. Um, and it does tail off pretty aggressively. You could see it ramped down there. 
Let's see, let's take a look at the efficiency. All right, so here it is. Uh, the efficiency analysis is in and it says 6.37. It's not terrible. Uh, you know, it's it's above, you know, it's above average. The average is, is about five, um, you know, as the bell curve lies. Um, so 6.37 is not bad. So this is not as bad as I thought. Um, and again, I have a bias against this mech, so forgive me. Um, but, you know, just to recap some things, if you look at that top chart, the, the effectiveness of this mech, the purple area on that area chart represents a combination of your optimized ACD and your survivability. And you can see where this thing's doing its, like the most, the bulk of its damage. The survivability pulls, pulls that damage back down, which stinks. Um, Okay, so let's talk about the uh, the loss, and, and that's kind of what we're talking about, the, the separation between those two areas, 19.5%. So it's losing about you know 20% of its damage um, because it's not surviving long enough uh, to get into range to really do uh, as much as it should be able to do. Um, all right, so gunnery sensitivity here, if you decide to dial up or dial down the pilot, um, you know, I mean, the slope moves, right? I mean, you, you can see that the, or, you know, the, 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 you're going to get some gains in efficiency if you, if you up gun this thing to like gunnery one or gunnery zero. Um, and honestly, like this is the kind of weird mech where, I don't know, maybe gunnery one actually isn't a bad choice, uh, if you're going to pay the points, because again, it's cheap to begin with. Um, and if you can keep it out at, you know, nine inches, nine hexes, and you're shooting, um, those medium lasers at long range, you know, yes, you're going to have a plus four, um, you know, for the range mod, but maybe that gunnery one offsets that a little bit, you know, the gunnery two. And I know some of you guys don't play with that, um, you know, the, those high of, of a skill level with intersphere pilots, and that's fine. Um, if you do play the gunnery four or gunnery three, you can see uh, that efficiency really tanks, you know, below the average at gunnery four. Um, so that's the efficiency. Let's talk about uh, let's talk about roles and how I would play this thing if I was forced uh, forced to have it on the table. Let's take a look. Okay, so I picked I picked two roles for this thing. Um, I picked Brawler, obviously. Even though it's got an AC-10, I just think about that as a sort of a means to provide cover fire on the way in until your you know your quad medium lasers uh, come into range because that's really where I mean you're basically doing 20 points of damage there, which is pretty sweet. Um, the other role is in a vanguard role. Um, so I think if you're in a lance where you have slower units, again, we talked about this, you've got your marauders, you've got your warhammers, um, you know, th those mainstay heavies, like those four, six type heavies, um, you could put this thing in there and you could just run it out front. Um, if it eats bullets, like who cares? It's, you know, it's a thousand BB. Like your Marauder is just going to survive to get closer and deal more damage. Your Warhammer is going to get in range, you know, and be able to, to dish out the hurt. Um, if they ignore it in favor of your heavy max wall, I mean, this thing, again, it can do, it can do some pretty serious damage. On a good day, it's doing a 30 point alpha strike. I mean, that's nothing, nothing to scoff at. Um, you know, that's, that's an awesome, right? Basically 30 points of damage. Um, three PPCs worth of damage. Now, granted, those medium lasers aren't all hitting the same spot, but, um, you know, you're still going to force piloting checks if you're playing with that rule, you know, and so on and so forth. So if we look at the threat assessment, again, you know, 15 to 10, the only thing in range is that AC-10. Um, once it gets closer uh, and it's in within nine inches, you can see that damage jumps up 20 points, right? That that alpha strike. Um the thing is this, uh, you'll see that the peak alpha strike is 33, um, but the peak uh, ACD, which is your ability, you know, to, to basically your average calculated damage, right? Um, it's the probability factored in, right? Which, which, how much are you most likely going to do? It's 27.5, which is still, you know, again, still pretty good uh, chunk of damage there. Um, at, and that's that's coming in a point blank range. But as you get further out, right? So I just I want to call this out because this is this is related to my comment about Gunnery One. Um, so the the dark red bar, that's you know, and this is a stack bar chart. The dark red bar is your alpha strike, your maximum. If everything hits, you do full damage. 
So look at the nine inch bar, all right? Um, and then the white bar is your zero heat ACD. That's your average calculated damage if you do no heat. And then the bright red is your ACD regardless of like if you're just gonna alpha strike and do as much damage as you can. Notice the, the gap between the maximum alpha strike, the dark red and the light red. It's, it's substantial. It's, I don't even know, it's like what, uh, 11 points. It's like 19 points of damage difference when those medium lasers are at long range. That's because again, you're looking at a plus four mod and you're rolling it four times, plus another time for that AC-10. You have a lot of chances to miss there. It's unlikely that you're going to hit all your damage there. Um, so that's where I think this thing is a little bit deceiving. You know, medium lasers sound good and they're great on paper, but really until you're within six inches and you're at medium range and you can shave that, that range penalty down, they're a bit of a gamble. Um, five inches is, I think, where this mech really shines. Because again, you're hitting a short range bracket on the AC-10, your medium lasers are at medium. I don't really care about the small laser. If you do, get into three inches, but um, that's the story with this mech. So what do I think about the Hunchback? Uh, my opinion is unchanged. I think it's it's a fun mech. Um, if I were a mech warrior and my commanding officer gave me a Hunchback, I would certainly quit if I could. Uh, it's not <laughs> It's not the kind of mech that gives me any sort of confidence. It's not one that I would necessarily put in a force if I was trying to be really competitive. Um, I think there are variants of the Hunchback, right? I believe it's the Swayback with the Gauss rifle. And I know that from a lore perspective, that thing was like experimental and didn't last, but something like that, I would definitely field. Something this slow needs more range and needs to do more damage at range um, in order for me to feel, I think, confident about it. Um, but it does sort of, you know, it does sort of go along with that, with that century and the CN, uh, you know, the 9A, I believe, uh, where it's got the LRM-10, the AC-10, the medium laser. Like these things are slow, they're cheap, they're sort of goofy, um, and they're, you know, they just, it just evokes everything that we love about Battletech. Um, so all things considered, you know, Hunchback's a fun mech. It's definitely one I would play in like a narrative game or a fun game with, uh, with my friends or Battle Report, something like that. Um, but I think from a competitive perspective, you know, the efficiency says it's it's not terrible, right? 6.37, but there are, there are a lot of mechs, you know, in that seven, eight, you know, nine plus range um, that I would certainly rather take um, in the 50 ton slot. So that said, guys, that wraps up my analysis of the Hunchback. Let me know how many of you I offended. Um, <laughs> I know there are a lot of Hunchback fans out there. So leave me your comment. Tell me what what the best variant for the Hunchback is, the one you love the most. I would love to hear all about it. Uh, I always love reading the comments where people tell me stories of games uh, they played with this mech, memorable moments, so don't forget to post those up as well. Uh, a couple quick announcements. Um, check out our website, guys. We have a whole download section of free downloads. Uh, we've got um, the, the Destiny rules reference. Um, we've got the um, the campaign guides for Alpha Strike Battletech, uh, Classic Battletech. Um, we've, we've got everything up there. So check it out. A lot of free downloads out there for you guys. Um, if you want to get more involved in the channel, you can head on over to Patreon. We have three tiers. A uh, little as a dollar gets you in on the action. And not only that, it really helps out the channel uh, and lets you know, uh, lets us know that you're enjoying the, uh, the content that you're seeing. Um, so if you want to get involved, you can head on over to Patreon. Um, and speaking of awesome mechs, if you want to get your hands on the brand new Hunchback, you can head on over to Aries Games and Minis. Uh, that is my number one go-to for pretty much everything I need, uh, whether it's Army Painter paints, dice, uh, the books, novels, uh, and of course the minis, everything over there at Aries Games and Minis. Uh, so guys, don't forget to check that one out. Uh, but that's all I've got. So guys, thanks so much for watching. And of course, stay tuned. Always great stuff coming from Death From Above Wargaming. Have a good night.